we have to talk alliance because you want me to talk alliance. I got several emails about this. I even got some texts, and I don't give the iJosh number out very liberally. So a lot of you have asked me, what do you think about this whole alliance deal? Well, what do you do when someone goes and does something that you yourself are very envious of? What do you do when someone goes and does something that you've tried to do already and they just out-executed you? Do you applaud? Do you stand back and admire from a distance? Do you watch, take careful notes, and then try and one-up them? Or do you just get really salty and go find a bunch of salty friends and form an alliance? Because that's what it seems for the moment the Pac-12, the ACC, and the Big Ten have decided to do. And some of you are out there living your lives like season one, episode four of The Office doesn't even exist. And so I got a quote for you guys. I want to tell you exactly how alliances end. This is how it always ends. Do I feel bad about betraying Jim? Not at all. Hope you're listening. That's the game. Convince him we're in an alliance. Get some information. Throw him to the wolves. That's politics, baby. Get what you can out of someone, then crush them. I think Jim might have learned a very valuable lesson. Dwight K. Schrute in a blonde wig. Alliances never work out the way you think they're going to. Because really, at the end of the day, we're all chasing the same thing around here. And it's not in great numbers. It's not in, in, in high volume. It's a commodity. We're looking at TV money. There's a finite supply of it. We're looking at championships. There are a finite supply of them. But that's okay, because on the front end, alliances sound great. So many have asked my thoughts on this. And here's the way I've looked at it. I've asked myself, why don't Burger King and Wendy's team up to take down McDonald's? Makes all the sense in the world, right? McDonald's is the king out there. And so you got Burger King, you got Wendy's. Together, they could take them down. Why doesn't that work? It's, to a fifth grader, it sounds like it makes all the sense in the world. Why wouldn't Delta and American team up, take down United? Why would they not do that? It makes all the sense in the world, right? And then once you've taken, once you've taken Delta down and once you've taken American down, well, then you can fight for it amongst yourselves. This was illustrated perfectly leading into the WWF breakdown pay-per-view in 1998. Even Vince McMahon couldn't make it work. You got Stone Cold as your champion, and you got to get the belt off of him by any means possible. So what do you do? Well, you take The Undertaker and Kane, who are brothers, in cahoots, by the way, and you put them in a triple threat. What did they do? They both covered Austin at the same time. So you couldn't even script an alliance to work out the right way, much less have it work out in real life. What are the particulars here? If you've not been following this story because you've been following camp, here's what's going on. Essentially, what we have here is the SEC threatening to suck all the air out of the room, and that's been well documented by this point. But then you have the fear that amongst ourselves, isolated in the Big Ten and the Pac-12 and the ACC, we stand to lose everything and gain nothing, and we really can't push back, but together we can, and so there is strength in numbers. Blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Big 12, sorry, grab your gift bag at the door, you're out of here. That's essentially the formula that's been laid out here. So what is the leverage point? Because if you're going to form an alliance, you got to have something that you are working to keep from the adversary or the predator, as the Washington state president has so aptly described the SEC. He's not wrong, necessarily. Greg Sankey fired back today, but he's not wrong. I think a lot of folks have it at the very tip of their tongue that, oh, well, they can get together and they can keep this expanded playoff from the SEC. No, friends, the SEC would have about the same reaction I just did if you posed that. They don't care. I don't think Greg Sankey's BSing you when he says, no, nah, we'll stay at four, we're fine. You guys are the ones who want to expand, not us. So they're not keeping that. I don't think the alliance, all caps, henceforth, is keeping anything from the SEC. I think they're maintaining a seat for themselves, maybe, to a little bit bigger degree than they could individually. And to that point, it may work out. But what we're really talking about here, and it's boring, so I don't spend a whole lot of time on it, is we're really talking about strength in numbers when it comes to scheduling. Now this, if you can work together, and that's a big if, it does pay off in the end because the Big Ten or the ACC or the Pac-12 looks down the road when they re-up their TV deals, which never happen congruently. They all happen at different times. And they ask, well, what if we had at least a scheduling alliance? I'm all on board with that, and everyone else should be too. If you've got the ACC and the Big Ten working together, and so instead of me having to watch UNLV go to play Michigan any given year, I can watch North Carolina go to play Michigan. Well, I'm on board with that. I think a lot of TV networks will be on board with that. But it sounds great. It sounds very good. It's like when you're drafting a team in your fantasy baseball league. It's just as easy as click and you drafted the guy. 
Well, that's not the real world, nor is this the real world, nor is taking a pizza box, turning it upside down, and drawing schedules out on the back of it. That's not really how it works. So let me ask you, your TV deal's up in three years, mine's up in five years. How are we going to sync them up? Are, are we going to evenly distribute revenue, even though my product is worth 35% more than yours according to what the market dictates? Am I just going to voluntarily cede that money to you? Uh, if I'm running things, I'm not. I'll just be honest with you. I'm not. And here's the other question. The other question, this is the great unknown to me, is are we thinking in an antiquated manner about future media rights deals? Are we thinking in a manner of Fox is going to sign this conference, CBS is going to sign that conference, ESPN is going to get that conference? In other words, could there be a revolutionary new age media framework on the horizon, the likes of which we can't even describe? When you first subscribed to Netflix, which I did when I was like coming out of high school, and you went in the queue, and you ordered, and they sent you the DVD and the little sleeve in the mail, if I were to have explained to you what Netflix was going to become, you would have dismissed me from the room. But yet, that's what it became. And so college football TV deals now versus what they'll be 10 years from now. There could be something on the horizon, every bit as revolutionary relative to what we have now, as the current Netflix is revolutionary relative to what it used to be when it was first a mailing service. So who knows? But I do think it is a good idea in principle, but then you get into the nuts and bolts and it's really tough to figure out. And all the while, you got the poor Big 12 that's just kind of out there on an island, even though they're not close to water in the middle of the country. And I have no clue. I was doing radio in, um, in Big 12 country today, and we put three of our heads together to try and come up with an answer, and we were no closer at the end of the call than we were at the beginning. Good call, good fun, but no closer, were we? So that's where the alliance stands right now. I guess I... I say that to say, you see the reason I did not really go with it on the Sunday show. Sometimes I have a very firm grasp of where I'm leaning. Sometimes I have, at least I hope to have, a very firm feel on where things are headed. I don't know where that's headed. I really don't. So those are my feelings. They're very fragmented at the moment.